Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to talk about, in this episode of Sound and Synth Basics, phase. What is phase? Phase is one of those things that's horribly misunderstood. So, you know, let's solve this horribly misunderstood thing. So phase is, in a nutshell, the starting point of a waveform. Now, that is not the truth. It is the truth, but it's not the truth. See, so people are going to talk about this like, oh, when you change the phase, you're starting, you're changing the starting point of when your waveform starts. And now this isn't true. Now, another thing that you should be aware of is you, the, ray, the, ray, the way your hearing works, you actually can't detect phase. Uh, well, I mean, it's arguable. There's, there's certain frequencies that you can detect phase shifts. You need something to compare it against. You can't just hear it and say, oh, that signal suffered a phase shift. Like you just, that just does not happen in your brain. You don't do that. You can hear it when you have two signals going at the same time, then phase begins to matter a lot. So you'll hear stuff like phase cancellation. But just so you know, one signal by itself, you're not going to hear phase problems. Now, it's almost, that's like almost never going to happen. You're almost always going to have something to compare it with. So it becomes an important topic. Now, I need to address something. So if this, the starting point of a waveform, a lot of people say that's phase. They're not wrong, but they're not 100% right either. Phase, so phase is the relationship of the circle of the waves forms period. So it's cycle being graphed. So and it, as you can see, we have an oscilloscope here, which is just a graphing of amplitude over time. Uh, okay, so let's address the oscilloscope. So here's an oscilloscope. And what it does is we have our amplitude up and down, compression refraction, and there's time. So it, it will just address this. And we've used this before in previous videos. So, and we could see our waveform. Here it is. And we have this up, down, and we've talked about cycles. So we know what one cycle is. And now let's talk about this phasing. Now, we need to distinguish it from polarity. So people are going to say flip the phase all the time. Just know that it, you, you could legitimately say, that's totally impossible. I can't do that. Do you want me to like, go back in time? Like, you can't do that. Why? What, what do you mean? So phase is linked to time. Okay, so this moment in time right here, this is a degree of phase. So all of this is phase. The whole thing is phase. There's no part of it that's not phase. It's not just the beginning or just the, or wherever it ends. It's not like that. People tend to make it sound like there's a start and that's like the only phase. The whole thing is phase. So that's why they're technically right but they're also wrong. Now, that's different than polarity. Polarity is, you know, here's our compression. We've gone on the positive side, and then here's our refraction on our negative side. And if we're, we can, when they say flip the phase, they probably mean flip the polarity. So you flip the polarity, and this relationship changes. The top becomes the bottom, bottom becomes the top. That's literally all it does. So that's polarity. Now, we need to talk more about this phase thing. So we have this degrees of phase. So if you were to map out a sine wave. This is true, and it gets more complicated because, you know, complex waveforms are a thing, but if we were to map out a sine wave on a circle, and we were to move, so, if you've taken trig, you know about this jazz, but this is, this comes from a circle. This actually comes from a right triangle moving in a circle. It's kind of interesting, and it's fluctuations and stuff going in there, all this geometry and trigonometry and more metries and stuff. So, uh, what let's say that this is our our zero degrees, okay? The zero cross point, it's a pretty good spot to pick zero. So here's zero, and as we go up our circle, so here's the first part of our circle. We're gonna call it zero degrees of phase. Now we could say degrees of phase in relationship to a cycle because guess what? We're graphing a circle, and a circle has 360 degrees. So we're gonna have 360 degrees of phase. This is later on the the relationship this creates later generated a whole type of synthesis that originally started off as phase modulation and then it became frequency modulation which was just basically a more extreme version of it. So we're studying a pretty important topic here. It means a lot of things. So here we have our first degree or zero degrees of phase. We go let's say we go up to the so we go from our starting point of our circle to the top of our circle, we've shifted 90 degrees. And so if we move over and we'll meet our maximum negative, there are reasons for this that I will not explain in this video or probably in this series because it's math. Um, but you reach that, that is uh, 90 degrees. So we have 90 degrees. Let's go another 90. We go all the way over, reach our zero crossing point. The important note, that's where our thing crosses zero so that's 180 degrees because we've traveled 180 degrees. Go another 90. That's 270. And reach it again. We're back at 360. And the cycle restarts. So that 360 is also zero. So hopefully you understood that. Now, why is this important? Well, 
I'm not sure because I'm recording this video at a later date. I'm actually redoing this video because I want to make it more clear. But if you haven't learned it yet, you're going to learn that all sounds are made of sine waves and they add differently. So if we were to put... Uh, okay, so let's talk about the summing of signals uh, on a very basic level. So let me get out another citrus. Okay, so here's another citrus. Let me make it a default citrus. I'm going to bring my keyboard down a few octaves. So it's a much lower, more listenable note. We recognize that these two signals are correlated. So what does correlated mean? This is a new term. Uh, correlated just means that they have similar, they have a relationship they share. They are similar. They are the same thing. So if we had noise and it was random and we had another piece of noise that was random, they would be called uncorrelated because they are not correlated. They're random by definition. But if we had noise that was correlated, this piece, this piece of noise, so piece of noise over here, piece of noise over here, pretty much the same piece of noise. When you put them together, they're going to do something different. They're going to add differently than a piece of uncorrelated noise. So right now, we're dealing with correlated signal. So as you can see, whenever I play a note, now I'm going to play two notes. I'm going to put down a... A C on this note, a C3, and we're gonna come here and put a C3 on this note. And when I play them, they actually sum together. So the positive part of this is annoying. What the junk? I had them both out earlier. Let me hit detached. It disappears. All right, never mind. I'm not playing that game right now. Okay, so anyways, we have this positive, this positive, and this negative. When a positive lines up with a positive in phase, they will add. When they, when they, uh, when a negative lines up with a positive, they will subtract. You see why correlated is important? If they're the same signal and we line them up, and we actually move 180 degrees, so we we move to that zero, we go halfway around a circle. If we move it over. We're going we're gonna to have the negatives perfectly correlated with the positives, and then we'll have no more sound. So I can actually adjust the phase right here by moving it. And see, this is where people get the notion of, oh, look at me. I'm adjusting the starting point of the waveform. And that's just like such, that's like true, but it's also like bull crap. Okay, anyways, so I'm going to adjust it. And as I move closer and closer to the relationship where they are 180 degrees out of phase, and you can actually see the phase being listed right here, they will cancel. So here we go. It's getting quieter and quieter. Oh, we're getting louder. I missed it. So here actually listed as a hundred percent. So this is listed not in degrees of phase, but in percentage, but you can see it's playing and we hear nothing. And this will be true of any signal that's uh, correlated. They're similar. So if they're not similar, a whole bunch of other things come into play. Uh, that I may or may not cover later in the series, maybe as a more in-depth uh, thing. But anyways, that's something that you need to be aware of because this can wreck your life. Now, something else, I'm recording this video at a later date, so I'm, I'm not sure if I said that, but uh, just so you know, so I'm maybe covering something a little bit ahead of myself. But we noticed that our sounds, I can look over here actually at my thing, and we have covered... We haven't even gotten to the sine wave is next video. So you're going to learn that all signals are made of sine waves. If you haven't already, I can't remember what I've said. So this right here is just a bunch of sine waves for right now. They're just like, I'm not going to explain anything past that. They all have their own phase. The way these phases add up is really important. So if you're going to make any, you can make any signal with it. And I kind of make it not sound like this, but if the phases don't add up, they won't produce the same thing. They'll sum differently because we'll have all these different things happening at different moments in time. So uh, if I can mess, now I can mess with the phase here and I'm not going to explain totally what I'm doing, but I want you to understand what phase can do. So here's the signal right now. And if I move the phase, you can hear a drastic difference in what is happening. And that is simply by changing this relationship over here on a fundamental level. Now, this actually can be applied to every single one of these sine waves individually, and they all have, they're all at different amplitudes, and they do all these crazy things. And that's a little uh, much for what we're talking about right now, but phase is a huge deal. Like, it make a huge deal. And it's a deal that some people understand more intuitively than they realize. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
If you have, subscribe and share this series with people because it's it's sound. Sound is cool. If you have any questions, let me know. And have a blessed day. Reverse it.